Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1445. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, back in Excel Magic Trick 1444 and part two, we saw the same counting problem. But in this video, instead of having a bunch of intermediate steps, we want a single cell array formula to accomplish our counting task. Now, we have a list of customers, and each customer has been sent coupons to three different stores. Here's our coupon redemption table. We can see for any customer what stores they went to. We can see that Sue went to Public, Trader Joe's, and Wegmans, so all three. Down here, FAM only went to Publix. Now, this is a small data set. This actual question came from Bart in the Netherlands, and here's the original 5,000 row data set. But for our formula versions, we've been using this small data set so we can see how the formulas work. Now, we have a list of all combinations of store names. And we simply need to know how many customers went to all three stores, how many customers went to just these two, including the last one, which is customers didn't go to any of the stores. Now, in 1444, we actually use the count ifs function to count any intersecting cell. How many times did this particular customer, in our case Mo, go to the public store? Over here, we got a count of 0 because Gigi did not go to Trader Joe's. Then we created trues and falses for each one of our groups and then counted how many trues we had in each column. Now, up here, we want to do this in a single cell. And we're actually going to simulate this entire table here in a single cell. Now, before we start our single cell array formula, I want to look at what happens when we make an array operation on two columns or a column in a row. I'm just going to type an equal sign and make something up here. I'm going to take a column, and this column actually has 12 rows. This is a 12 by 1 array. And I'm going to ask the question, are any of you equal to? And I'm going to use another column, but this column is only filled with three rows. Now, when we do this kind of array operation, we get into trouble. If I hit F9, it doesn't like that. If it's a column against a column or a bunch of rows compared to a bunch of rows, they have to be the same dimension, Control-Z. But if I instead ask the question 12 by 1, a bunch of rows, please see if any of you are equal to a bunch of columns. Now, this is a 1 by 3 array, one row three columns. Array formulas have no problem with this. Just as we did down in this count ifs, in any intersecting cell, we were looking at the column header and the row header. That's the same thing that happens when you do an array operation on a row and a column. If I hit F9, look at that. It got, in our case, all falses. But it got an answer just like down here, three answers for every row. Now, we need to look at this syntax, because that's going to be very important up on our array formula. Arrays are always housed with curly brackets. Comma means go over a column, and semicolon means go down a row. I always remember that comma and column start with the letter C. So comma always means column. And then I just remember that semicolon means row. Now, why is this Control-Z silly little example here important? Because down here, if I hit F2, notice we would like to use the count ifs up here and create this cross-tabulated table. But notice we used a single cell in each one of the criteria arguments. If we were to instead put the entire column filled with rows and the entire row filled with columns here, count ifs will do an array operation and spit out in our single cell the entire array of customer and store counts. So let's try that. 
equals count ifs. I'm going to highlight first the customer range. I'm going to hit the F4 key, comma, and criteria. I'm going to highlight down here customer names properly listed in 12 rows, F4 to lock it in all directions, comma, and then criteria range. We're looking at the store, F4, comma, and then the actual criteria for our cross-tabulated table sitting in the columns, F4. Now, we used F4 on all the references, because as we copy down, we need this complete table in every cell. Now, when I close parentheses and hit F9, you're not going to believe that. That entire table is equivalent to this table down here. Now, notice curly brackets house the array. Comma means go over a column. Semicolon means go down a row. Notice 1, 2, 1. 1, 2, 1. Those are in columns. Semicolon, go down a row. Then we have 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Now, another interesting note here. A lot of times when you read DAX books or watch DAX videos, people will talk about the amazing DAX table functions, which return a table. And sometimes you hear, well, they can't. that's not possible over in Excel. Actually, with array formulas, as we see right here, it is possible. Now, of course, DAX can work on millions or hundreds of millions of rows. Array formulas have no chance when they work on millions of rows because it's too, just too calculation intensive. Now I'm going to Control Z. Now I'm going to enter this and just copy it down. All I want to do is go to the last cell and hit F2 and then F9 just to prove that that actually is the same table in every single cell. Now I'm going to come up to the Escape. Now I'm going to come up to the top, F2, and I want to ask the question, how many of you are greater than 0? And I'm going to need parentheses around this comparative operator array calculation here, because we're going to put lots of stuff around it. But let's hit F9. Now we have our pattern of trues and falses. Now what this tells us is the pattern of trues and falses for the customers. Now if we look at the first customer, which is Sue, true, true, true. That means Sue went to all the stores. If we go down to the 10th, and it looks like true, 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 that's the only other customer, Miki, who went to all stores. Now we want to Control Z. Now that pattern of trues and falses will be the same all the way down. Our next step is to ask for each row whether the pattern of trues and falses matches the pattern of the stores. Now notice, for this first row, we need to find in that resultant array all of the rows that have true, true, true. When we copy the formula down for this row, we need to find all of the customers that have true, true, false. So I'm going to create another array operation. I'm going to say, in that whole cross-tabulated array of trues and falses. How many rows are equal to, and I don't want to do the array syntax for true, true, true. I want a formula element that, as I copy down, will automatically generate the right patterns of trues and falses. So I'm going to ask the question using the isText function, how many of the relative cell references, 3 to my left, are equal to text? Now notice right now, this would deliver, in fact, let's highlight this in F9. It delivers true, true, true. But when I copy it down to the next row, it will deliver true, true, false. So that will work. Control Z. Now I'm going to enter this and copy it down. And just go look. First cell, F2, F9. Notice when we ask that question, of course, Sue gets true, true, true. And then also, customer 10, Miki, gets true, true, true. But watch what happens to Sue when we get down to the next row. Escape, down arrow, F2, F9. Of course, Sue does not get true, true, true anymore because we asked the question of Sue, was that pattern equal to true, true, false? So that doesn't work. But our second customer, Tyrone, does get a true, 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 because his pattern was true, true, false. Now, as we copy this 
cross tabulated array of trues and falses down. What we're interested in is counting when there are three trues in this array. So escape, I come back to the top cell F2. I'm going to wrap parentheses around this and convert it to ones and zeros. And I'm going to use double negative. Any math operation converts trues and falses to ones and zeros. But I'm going to use the double negative because that tends to be the most efficient in terms of calculating speed. I'm going to enter this, Control-Enter, copy it down. Click in the top cell, F2, F9. Now we're getting patterns of 1, 1, 1 for each row. So Sue and Miki will get 1, 1, 1. If I escape, click in the cell F2, F9. Now we're getting, for Tyrone, 1, 1, 1. The next step in this is that we actually want to add each row. Now, this is a 12 by 3 column table. What we really want is a 12 by 1 array that would give us 2 total for the first customer and 3 total for the second customer and so on. Now, the way we're going to do that is we're going to use matrix algebra. If we take this 12 by 3 array of numbers and multiply it by a 3 by 1, 1, 1, 1, that will add each row. It's not really adding. It, we're just multiplying each row by 1, 1, 1. So it will get 1, 1, 0. And here we get 1, 1, 1. But then the resultant array will be a 12 by 1 with the net result of adding each row. Now, in order to do matrix algebra, you have to look at the two arrays, 12 by 3 times 3 by 1. The columns of the first have to be equal to the rows of the second, and they are. And the resultant array will be rows from the first, columns from the second. Now, if you want to see a video on the function, we're going to use mmult for matrix multiplication. I wrote a book called Control-Shift-Enter. There's a whole chapter on it. Or you just go to my YouTube channel, search for the mmult function and watch the video in the Control-Shift-Enter playlist. Now I'm going to escape up here. We're going to come up to the top, F2. Now we're going to use MM tab. There it is, Mamult for matrix multiplication. There's the first array. Come to the end, comma. And I'm going to hard code in array two, curly bracket, one, semicolon one, semicolon one and curly bracket. Those had to be semicolons because this array had to be going down across the rows. Now close parentheses. Now if I F9, you got to be kidding me. Sue and Miki have a count of three. Control Z. Let's just enter this and copy it down. We can go to the second cell, F2, F9. We can see Tyrone, the second customer, has a three. Now as this formula element gets copied down, we're just interested in the threes. Escape. So what do we do? We come to the top, F2. And I want to ask the question, are any of you in that 12 by 1 array equal to 3? Control Enter. Double click and send it down. I'm going to click on the top cell, F2, F9. I can see I get a true for Sue and a true for Miki. Escape. F2, F9, there's only one true in that entire array for Tyrone. Now I want to add the true so we get our count. Come to the top, F2. First, I'm going to convert those to ones and zeros. So I'm going to use double negative, open parentheses, close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. If I come to the top cell, F2, F9, look, we have two ones. If we simply add it, now we have our answer. Escape, if I go down to the second row, F2, F9, there, I get a single one for Tyrone. So if we count those, boom, we have our answer. Escape. Now I'm going to hit F2. This is an array formula with lots of array calculations. But an interesting thing about array functions like Mamult, Linest, transpose, and others. 
if you put the result into an aggregate function like sum or count or max, we're not going to have to use Control Shift Enter. I'm going to come to the end, close parentheses, and there's our formula. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Go to the last cell, F2. There it is looking good. All the cell references in the right place. Now I actually want to change one thing. I'm going to come to the top, F2. Inside the count ifs, I was pointing down here just to emphasize this cross tabulated, but I want to point all the ranges to our input tables here. So for the first one, this has to be in rows, no problem. Our customer table is set up that way, so I'm going to highlight those. F4 to lock it. Now we come over to stores. Our store table is not set up that way, but since the first combination has all stores and they're in columns, I'm simply going to highlight these and hit the F4 key to lock it in all directions. Now I can Control Enter, double click and send it down. Come to the last cell, F2, and it's pointing just at our input tables and our combination of store names. Now, there's still one last thing we can do to this formula, F2. Right here for the second array, we hard coded this in. Now, this is fine to hard code it in if we're not going to ever have more than three stores. But since that information, meaning how many ones we need, always comes from the number of stores, we can build a dynamic vertical array of ones by using the row function. Row, highlight the stores. Now, these aren't Excel tables where if it expands, our formula would automatically expand. But we could convert these to Excel tables. Otherwise, we'd have to insert a row and push Trader Joe's down to get this to be dynamic. But no problem, F4, close parentheses. Now, of course, row is not going to work because row will give us 8, 9, 10, and we need 1, 1, 1. But any number raised to 0 is 1. So now we have a formula element, if we F9, that gives us a vertical array of 1s. And if we were to insert a row over here, that would update. Control Z, actually, Control Enter. Double click and send it down. I wanted to show you this is how you'd have to do it if it wasn't an Excel table, right? F2, and if we came here just to the array and F9, you could see that would give us a dynamic vertical array of ones. Escape, Control Z to undo that. Go to the last cell, F2. And there is our final formula for counting the number of customers for each one of our coupon store groups. All right, that was a little bit of fun with array formulas. If you like that video, click that thumbs up, comment, sub if you haven't subbed already, and we'll see you next video.